Beautiful. Welcome back in, guys, to One Piece Chapter 1077. We got the iconic Parvision here with us today. Uh, he's wearing his iconic beanie as well, so that's how you know this is a big brain chapter. He has to contain it, you know, right? If, if, he, if he takes off the beanie, the brain's going to be exposed to air, and it's just not going to be any good. So, Par, we have the cover page here. We, we got Judge and Caesar, the, the goats, right? The, the, the best dad of all time mixed along with the best scientist of all time. And uh, it, it looks like they're going after Vegapunk, right? They, they realize that it was Vegapunk who was their obstacle all along. He's the guy they want to take down. He's the guy they should surpass. And uh, do you think this brings up the stocks in the idea that they might show up on Egghead? Just want to let you know, this: the stream ended with like 400 votes. Vegapunk is a better character uh, by a margin of like 70%. No, okay, the margin was 2%. And that's no, that's no, because no, 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 a that lot of people end. don't have taste, right? <laughs> it, it is what it is, you know. Vegapunk versus Caesar, it's like it's like tomato tomato. They're the same person, really. The, I think what's interesting mostly about this page, right, is like this rivalry is so interesting because it's like they say, wait a second, it's all Vegapunk's fault. And it's like I, people have, especially with the context of this chapter, have now construed that to meaning that it's relating to current events which wouldn't necessarily make sense for the timeline yeah but uh but then it's like are they bonding over a like a, a hatred mutual hatred is what it seems from like mads yeah which is like another interesting spin it's like the inferiority thing right like they they look at vegapunk you're like he's too smart why, why is he the guy that's getting away with everything yeah, but and then, but the then the why joke. would they be fight like because what they like wait a second, it's all Vegapunk's fault. That implies that they were fighting each other because they don't like each other, and then the reason why they don't like each other is Vegapunk, right? Like that's yeah. kind of what the synthesis of that would be, which is like what 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 did Vegapunk do to them? They're just bad scientists and bad like in comparison well, to Vegapunk. Probably because they sold them out to the world government, right? Like Vegapunk made a deal with the world government, Judge probably didn't like it, so he left, and then Caesar's like, uh Working oh. with them's cool for a minute, but now I don't want to do it. Oh, is that the context we're supposed to have? Like the Maybe. Gorosei meeting was prior to when Mads was operational, and so that meeting was the disbandment of Mads because Vegapunk was like, Dufeld isn't giving us enough money, so let's go to the let, let's not go to the next piggy bank, which is the Gorosei, apparently. And then that's when he's like, you know what? We're disbanding Mads, and then that's why they're in the situation. You know what? I like that version of the story. Yeah, I mean, we, we I wish there was dialogue in some of these cover pages. Like, I, I wish we just had, like, one-liners from both of them. That would give us so much more context, but just based off of how it's looking, it looks like they both just don't like Vegapunk right now. And yeah. like you said, we don't know the real timeline. Like, Oda isn't, like, saying, oh, this is uh, March 2nd, 2002. Like, yeah. this isn't, like, Y2K, so we have no real information <laughs> about this. So do you think there is a possibility that they're currently on their way or they're about to head there or they've already been to Egghead Island prior to where we, when we got here? I think it would make sense for there to be a Mads reunion, right? Yeah. Like, the thing is, it's when. does Is Egghead the right spot? I don't know. I think the reveal of what this chapter ends with will tell us because if the character that gets revealed ends up elevating the situation or constraining the situation constraining not a bad thing it just means you know egghead is within egghead as far as expansive as egghead already is introducing gorsay introducing an, a third party that expands it right but if we're expanding it then i could see a world where mads does show up and if not in terms of that character it could be something else too what's interesting is people uh want to think like for me, for me at this standpoint, I feel like once Mads broke up, besides Caesar, but Caesar with asterisks, none of the other scientists ever interact with Vegapunk ever again. So they don't even know about Egghead. They don't know about anything of the workings here. So they would be like foreigners on a new land. It wouldn't be like a home. Um, they might yeah. be familiar with Vegapunk and how he works, but I don't think that translates necessarily here, especially given that their uh, Mads facility was a ship and Egghead is an island with a a sky island with with holograms is very different than than what they were on they're gonna be a and, little bit lost when they get here yeah and then caesar uh caesar knew him from punk hazard but after punk hazard i doubt he interacted with with uh vegapunk at any point and 
the thing is punk hazard wasn't even remotely similar to 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 egghead in in a lot of ways like yes it was similar that it was punk hazard vega punk right but the inner workings was didn't feel like it's what not Egghead's futuristic like. it's not 500 years in the future yeah i, I, and I get so, it yeah I would I would like it for Mads to reu to come to Egghead for the express reason for them to just be uh, like doe eyed for them to just like you know break through their their hatred for Vega Punk or themselves and hit that Frankie Star eyes and be like whoa and like feel like a scientist you know what I mean because that's what's you know. It, even in the real world, like even if you're a scientist working uh, uh, in comp in competition to another scientist, if that scientist does something cool, you can't you can't uh, just hate, right? Like even even mimicry is a form of of, of uh, admiration, right, or something like that. Uh, imitation is a form of love, or something like that, right? So one way or the other, uh, I, I would like that. It's just like I don't know if that that is happening in Egghead. And so I don't think that they're going to be on their way. I don't think so. It's just, okay. it's, it'd be weird. It'd be weird. I, I I feel like they might actually make an appearance by the end. I feel like instead of Vegapunk leaving with the Straw Hats, I think Vegapunk's going to leave with Mads. That would, okay. I like, okay, okay. If you say it like that, the only weird thing about that is that fodderizes Sanji's family. <laughs> The Seraphim's walking on, and then and then Yonji, Ichiji, but Niji are thing. like, oh, oh, oh. I, I, I think I think this would open up. So you you said that Caesar and Judge might have respect for Vegapunk's creations. I think they will deep down, but on the surface they're gonna on probably surface, look at everything and say, oh, this is garbage. I can make something better, and it'll just boost Caesar and Judge's capabilities. Like it'll it'll push him past their limits to make things that are quote unquote better than the Seraphims, even though they probably won't be. That's I, fair. I think, I, I think, think there's a lot of cool things there. I think where okay, so so this gets to a macro picture. I know we're spending a lot of time on the cover story, but the macro picture I saw it as was uh, Judge and Caesar re reconnect with the the main character, the main plot later on, and they're a third, not third party, an independent group, right? There's lots of yeah. independent groups in One Piece that will side with Luffy ultimately, and they would be one of them. They're not exactly for Sanji, for the Strats, but they assisted even if they're not, you know, uh, on his side. I look at that like Cross Guild is probably going to end up one way or the other, helping Luffy, assisting Luffy by the end of the story. Story, right and um when it comes to that that's i saw them creating their own amalgamation of of things that on their own for their own express purpose maybe it's a takedown vegapunk maybe it's a takedown the straw hats whatever it is and then they ultimately work with the straw hats but if in your way vegapunk goes with them that would mean that all of their creations would essentially blend together there would be benefits Caesar would benefit, Judge would benefit, and maybe even Vega Vegapunk would benefit, right? And the interesting thing about that would be, we know why Vegapunk would help Luffy, right? Because, you know, on one side, you know, there's another side, but on one side, Vegapunk is a good guy who apparently wants to fix the Marines' world government from within, from the people working within, and he has that ulterior motive that ties him to Dragon in some way, right? Um, but the other scientists don't necessarily have that. So Vegapunk working with them, it's like, yeah, they could start it up, but it's like, it's almost weird that they would work together unless they were motivated by something else. Because right now, they are they would be motivated to trump Vegapunk because they're like, it's all Vegapunk's fault, right? So then they're like, let's work together to trump Vegapunk. And then they show up later and they elevated themselves on their own without Vegapunk. And then they show up later with their own things. And so I see both ways, but I think I might like the one where they're not with Vegapunk so that yeah. they can be cool characters on their own. Like, I, I want to like Caesar. I want, I no, 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 I don't want to like Judge, but I want to appreciate they're both the scientific great. thing. No, they're not both great. They're not both Judge Caesar and Caesar are dope. What a good Judge combo. Awful, it's it's like Sanji and Zoro if they were scientists. Uh, that's true, that's Too true. Too good. Yeah. All right, so going on to the chapter, though, we pick up, uh, you know, on the bottom floor of Egghead, we have Sentomaru being surrounded by citizens still. He hasn't moved an inch, and he's telling everybody to run away. <laughs> he's like, yo, like, Ohara's gonna happen. Something something way worse than this is gonna happen, right? And then we got a really nice family vacation photo from Ohara. We have <laughs> we have Saul, <laughs> Robin, Clover, Olvia, and Aokiji moments before disaster. It's literally a Christmas card. Yeah, it's a, like it's a postcard. <laughs> even, even Clover's like, hey, peace out, guys. See, see you in heaven. 
<laughs> literally peace out. Hey. Oh my god. Like the tree is Deuces, perfectly man. fine there. Fire on the other side. And then there's just the poster card. Like a postcard. Yeah, like if your like, family went on vacation, I feel like this is something they would send you. Yeah. Just like, yeah. hey, and none <laughs> thinking of, of you sense. guys. Absolutely none of it makes sense. Uh, it's pretty but, funny. But we clarified on the stream, um, the live reaction stream, that like this, this is this, gonna be a five episode flashback in the anime. <laughs> we're we're, we're gonna thing. get Ohara, but like with brand new animation. It's insulting because Ishitani's we gonna go just crazy. had the will of Ohara. It's like you would imagine we'd have a refresher prior to that. That would have <laughs> made more sense, right? But yeah. then on top of that, this panel is to us at the moment feels out of con not out of context it is out of context because Sentamaru is not saying this it's not like Sentamaru is communicating to the citizens of egghead that the scholars were conducting research on poneglyphs which are taboo it's not like i don't think Sentamaru he probably knows about that but it's not him telling them it's that. like a narrator more it's it's a narrator thing more than than anything because it's yeah. also like there's no dialogue bubbles or anything we have the scroll text at the top so it's definitely yeah. like a narrator thing and I'm excited, man. When we get this reanimated, I hope we have like crazy auras from the Buster Call. Imagine each what? like, <laughs> you know how like there's aura in the anime, which I don't mind. It's gonna be Saul. Saul's gonna have but, aura when he lifts up the ship. Imagine all all the five battleships with vice admirals have like crazy different colored aura. That'd be nice. That's not even how the aura worked in the anime. Now you're asking <laughs> for like actually Dragon Ball Z. Type yeah, thing. they all come together and cause like a giant explosion. No, no, no. What I dope. want is them to retcon some of Saul's lines. I want him to say when he lifts up the ship, he goes, he like does his direct shi shi but he's like, this is for the will of Ohara. And then he tosses <laughs> the shit. <laughs> and he has the, he has the aura like you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and then Aokiji uh, comes on and he has a different devil fruit altogether. <laughs> he's like, magu, magu. <laughs> he uses like the magma fruit. It just gets retconned. Like just the goofiest things. I would love. You that. know they. At, you know what? Actually, when you think about it, if they redo this in the anime, they might add the scenes where Aokiji saves Saul. Like he's just oh, like, oh yeah, like, that'd he be whispers nice. into Saul's ears, like, just stay down, brother. Just stay down. <laughs> this won't kill you. You know that. You're gonna get a lot of burn marks from this one, buddy. <laughs> You're gonna <laughs> the, suffer, Saul. The people of the future will remember you by your name. My ice will only protect you for five minutes. The Buster Call will do the rest. Say goodbye to your skin, Saul. <laughs> I I love goofy plot events, so I'm all about it. Like, th the goofier things get, the more I like it. So whenever you're like, oh, why is side dissing it? I'm not dissing it, bro. Like, I, I think it's funny. I I'm in here for a good laugh, a good time. And, and this chapter had a lot of call, call me Call me Joy this. Boy. Why don't you? Yeah. Yeah, we joy boying. We were joy boying. We so gotta make that a slang, like a slang term. Joy boying. Like joy boying. Yeah, like yeah. oh that dude joy boying. the tongue. Yeah. yeah, and then like I could see that being popular, like you know, like that boy, that that dude's joy boying. You know what I mean? And then people make Look that. Look at that popular. boy's joy. Yeah, some some way that, or that another. Dude, that dude's joying it up. Look guys, at that dude hitting the joint. Let's start it up. Let's yeah, start it up. It. Let's get this slang. You know, so. we had the one piece is real. Now we got to make this a slang term that <laughs> infiltrates all of society. The joy boy is here. And it's just a, a clown showing up at a party. <laughs> <laughs> so going on, though, Sent Tomorrow says that, you know, the government has decided to erase Vegapunk. Something way worse than Ohada is going to happen here. Do you think we're going to get hit with the Buster Call with Aura here? Or do you think it's going to be Lelucia? Well, what do you think is going down? I... I felt like Lelucia made more sense. I, but the like, thing with Lelucia, think... though, like, I, I, I'm down for Lelucia, too. But here's the thing, like, if it's Lelucia, you don't really need the Godosei here. You don't need Kizaru or the battleships. Because Lelucia happened just, like, on a whim almost. Like, they marked it on a map, like, oh, it's Lelucia. It's, we're going to say goodbye to that town. And then they just yeah. destroy it. Like, they didn't need anyone nearby. A uh, factor that we don't quite understand is Saint Saturn. What context is he coming here for is he coming here in the in the understanding that all the other gore say know that he's coming here or is he coming here as a lone wolf because that changes everything if he's coming as a lone wolf the lucy event could still happen and it might be 
specifically also for Saint Saturn. If there's a defector, the best way to get rid of them is just erase them. You have a Gorosei member who might defect. Like that's a huge problem. You want to delete that person instantly, right? Imagine a world where they don't know Saint Saturn's uh, initiative here, and he ends up going to Dragon or Vegapunk or whatever side. That would be crazy, really bad. And I'm not saying that's the, the reality here. Right now, we don't know the full context. A lot of the lines that he said so far are kind of vague, other than that he's like disappointed in Vegapunk. But that could mean a lot of things, right? Because it could mean that Vegapunk has been doing something. That that goes against what like the ulterior motive was about you know Vegapunk saying like oh I want to fix the world whatever right the Gorsei guy could be on that side we don't know who's in Sword or who started Sword or how far deep Sword goes it could be that that guy is a part of Sword we don't we don't have a full context so uh, the until Lucia... they reach the island which I, I guess is like fifty five thousand miles away considering yeah, they're yeah. still not here. Yeah, so like I the O'Hara Buster call, it makes sense why? Because they sent a hundred battleships there. These guys are traveling from the East Blue. But <laughs> but at the same time, I don't see Buster Calls being effective at all because Centimar is prepped for them. He sent all the pacifistas with the ultimate defense, the bubble shield, just waiting at the coast. They're gonna put up a bubble shield and then the Buster Calls completely muted. But the Buster Call is like the Navy's greatest power. What are you talking about? Well, now we there's a Lelucia. We don't know how great of a power that is, right? So, yeah. Okay, guys, please leave the comments down below. Which one is stronger, Lelucia or Buster Call? Let's let let's let's be real for a second. Like, no memes, Buster Call or Lelucia. I I think I know the winner. Yeah, one one you know probably didn't even kill Sabo. I mean, but the <laughs> other one didn't even kill a stationary giant that was he there. was frozen. Yeah, he was frozen. <laughs> He's frozen. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that'd be hell, right? Like, imagine being frozen one minute, and then you're just woken up by flames everywhere the next minute. He's a giant. Like, He's the, the shock to your system would be insane. I'm surprised you're that compassionate that you thought about it like that. You put yourself in Saul's shoes. Because look at that so guy. I, Sai is so I, I look up medieval torture a lot. Uh, and let me tell you, the, the, the brazen bull, man. Like, I have nightmares about that one. What's the brazen bull? That's you where they put you in a bull and they light it on fire. Like like an iron bull. So you like you slowly melt. They made an iron bull. What? What's the point of the iron bull? What use is it? Just for this torture? I imagine it's the bull just for the torture. Used... No, the bull is functional outside. No, no, no. You it's literally just... just for torture. Why a bull? Dude, so though? many things were. That, that's like asking what other functions does an iron maiden have? No, no, but like like a co you could just burn them in an iron coffin. That's a thing. Like it, well, like a steel coffin. Yeah, a steel coffin. Why, I think why it's for the symbolism. What is, that's what I'm asking. What's the symbolism? W what's, what's the, the symbolism of the Iron Maiden? What is the isn't the Iron Maiden just a coffin with spikes inside? It's it's shaped after a a woman, I believe. Like Maybe it's supposed, it it's supposed to be like some his... prophetic figure, and it's it, supposed to be I, symbolic. You're giving me a story to explain the Iron Maiden. I, I'm asking that for the bull. It, I'm <laughs> saying the bull probably has some symbolism. Okay, fair, fair. We're, 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 we're talking blame. about we're, we're talking about medieval torch. You you, you well, think they you have like some crazy deep meaning? Yeah, when no, the Iron Maiden you just said had a prophetical well, whatever. Well, when I when I when I look up when I look up medieval torture devices, I don't go to like the whole backstory. Like, oh, why they pick the shape here? Why okay, does the okay, why does pause. the bull have toes? Pause. Why You're does the Iron Maiden have a chat? Chat. This have is a to list. you. Chat. This is to you. Tell me I'm not the weird one. You you fully expected Sai to dive one click deeper to figure out what the bull meant here. I, I am, okay. When I say I do medieval, uh, I look up medieval torture devices, it's on a YouTube video, like a top 10, oh, top 10 devices. You know, I, I look at top 10s, top 10 fish in the Marianas Trench. I'm not over here, like, writing an essay, like, you know, Googling, looking at the fifth page results, and like, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I, I, I see I see Webster's.md.government listed the, the brazen bull as a device made by copper found in the western mines of the Appalachian Mountains. That's probably it. That's probably it. <laughs> and you know what? I feel personally attacked because that, that is what I do. And, and now, now I'm kind of <laughs> sad that, that you created this separation. I thought we were the same. So I thought I thought we were. Come on. <laughs> I don't I don't theory craft about the medieval <laughs> times bar. I just no. take it how it comes. <laughs> I no. told you I'm afraid of the brazen like, bull. Like every like page that. I'd click on it, I just like scream at the monitor, like, oh god. 
<laughs> the arrows, like, you know, like in an anime or cartoon where they, like, stab through somebody and it's like, oh, yeah. Oh. Like, that's what just happened here. <laughs> wait, how did we get to the brazen? Oh, wait, we're talking about Saul. <laughs> talking about Saul being burned on Ohara. Yeah, the man with burn marks. Yeah, rest <laughs> in peace, Saul. So, going on with the chapter, though, we got we got the, the rematch here, as I would call it, between uh, Group A versus the K Seraphim. I kind of messed that up. K Seraphim, the H Seraphim, the Mihawk and Kuma model. And oh. the battle is still going on, you know? The, they got the fly, the fire on their back. They're taking no damage. They're kind of surprised by it, too, which I thought was kind of funny. And oh. Luffy makes a, a funny observation saying, Hey, like, what up? what's up with this? Are you guys Kaido? He compares the durability of Lunarians to Kaido, which is pretty crazy when you think about it, considering they're kids. Yeah. Like, once they, once they grow up, these guys are going to be absolute menaces. If they're already tanking Gear 4 and Zoro attacks and all this... And then Zoro ends up listing their weakness, and, you know, the, the guys are like, yo, you should have noticed this sooner. And now that they know the weakness, are, are we expecting a, a one-hit KO next chapter? I mean, that's what happened with King, right? Like, that's, that, that's the reality. <laughs> uh, it's... The Kaido line was crazy to me because, like, I didn't expect all of that. But then the Lunarian thing gets, like, built up and built down all in the same situation, right? Like, apparently there's just tank, like, invincible tanks. And the moment the fire goes down, they're paper mache. And then, like, Nami's out here blasting Jinbei and doing damage. Like, uh, you yeah. know. Yeah. Nami did he, damage on him. And he has yeah, his like, fire on, too. Yeah, he has his fire on. And same with Sanji. So interesting. Yeah. That's and then crazy. Sanji. Sanji ends up kicking him, and we don't get to see the damage from it, um, but uh, I, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I mean, we, we can't really tell damage and how much they actually felt, but just seeing the white of, like, Jimbei's eyes coming out twice from Nami and Sanji, when that did not happen for the Mihawk or Kuma Seraphim, kind of nuts. Yeah, yeah. Like, And we know Sanji... It's, like, it's good to see. Sanji was, like... like the he the moves that he's using is equivalent to the moves that are being used right now in in, in a lot of ways right maybe actually no he was using Efreet right like he used Efreet on uh did he use Efreet I like forget. did he activate it yeah no he said a rare fillet steak oh no he didn't use Efreet yet no uh, I mean I from what I could tell I can't see any flames from Sanji's legs so I can't yeah, say so for not if he's even like powered himself up you know this isn't Sanji Gear Fourth right here this might just be base Sanji. Yeah, I mean, similar to Zoro using one sword style, right? He's not using Tiger Hunt. He's not using yeah. uh, Dragon Blaze yet, but he's he's definitely pulling out like he, the the Zoro move connecting back to the same finishing move that he used on Mister One, and then for this Seraphim to be unscathed is kind of jarring, right? Because it's like, yes, we get that they're super strong, but like, is the Lunarian gene that broken? And if so. Is King not the dumbest person in the verse to turn off his flame? I mean, no, we don't have to go there, but like, it's it's just crazy how how much of a buff Lunarian Gene is, um, which is crazy for Sanji if he actually ends up this, having this. Kind of reminds there. me of when Luffy fought Katakuri. How Katakuri could only see in the future when he's not really attacking, like he can only use like one advancement at a time. Like he either, he either has like the power mochi on or he has the future sight on. It's kind of like mm -hmm. that, where like it seems like the Lunarians bringing down their flame is only when they attack, so you kind of have to counter it more than anything. Yeah, oh no, it, it's yeah. it's weird. It, it's an interesting power, but just regardless, though, I think it's pretty busted. Yeah, I think the main cool connection that uh, you and a chatter pointed out that some someone tweeted uh, was that when the flame goes down, it seems like. Uh, that's when so so they can't the seraphims can't use the powers at the moment the devil fruit powers while the flame is up which is such an interesting connection you know maybe that's like a patch that oda put in like oh well if they can use the devil fruit powers and be invincible that's kind of broken we have to build in a weakness but i wonder if there's like an inside logic as to why the flame thing is important to devil fruit powers but then again though king in his pterodactyl form still had the flame Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not really a thing. I think it's only when they're attacking. And that's, you know, usually when the Seraphim attack, it's with their Devil Fruits. So, true, true. that's what so, I would have so to go with. Because, like, the Mihawk or... Seraphim has fire behind him while he's fighting Zoro. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. Even with the Sword Swing, the Mihawk Seraphim doesn't have fire. 
So it's just whenever they're attacking. So like yeah, why, I mean that's kind of how King why... was, right? Sort like Zoro had to like instantly counter to to hit him. I'm pretty sure he attacked many times. I think King had many panels where he had, had attacks and his flame is on. I doubt. I I don't think that there's. I know that people were saying that his the offensive ability goes up, but like for it to be feel like a hundred or nothing, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they can't attack unless the flame is off, or they can't defend unless the flame I, is on. I think, it's such a weird. I think a better thing. maybe a better way to think about the flame is kind of like if somebody okay, like let's say you're in a fight, right? Mm -hmm. I think having the flame on would be like if you're braced for an attack. Uh huh. Like, let's say I'm gonna I'm going in to punch you, you're standing there, you see that I'm about to punch you, you have the flame on, you're not gonna let it go. But let's say you're going in for an attack for me, and you're not really braced for an attack, you're expecting to hit me. And then I hit you back, I counter whatever, and the flame's not on because you just weren't ready for it. I feel like it so, might be like one of those situations. You know, like, an, I, I kind of wish Oda dropped an SBS about this right here, like how the flames yeah, work, but... Yeah, I would it's, almost It's interesting trade, to think like, about. I'd trade the chopper SBS for this one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're playing Pokemon cards with the uh, with the SBS. Like, uh, uh, I'll trade you this SBS for this one. I mean, one of the SBSs was actually super valuable to this chapter, right? I forget which one it was. Um, oh, the Sanji eyebrow thing, right? Which is something yeah. that I predicted in my Sanji uh, video that that this is exactly how it worked um, prior to to all the Sanji eyebrow stuff. But in the SBS, Oda clarified that, yeah, this is related to his power. So when it's on, it's on. Um, so and, and we got that shown right after. It's so. cool. I love I It almost feels like Sanji's dialogue changes, too. Oh, he becomes more aggressive. Yeah, right? he says, I don't care if you're just a little brat or Jimbei. You'll be put to death. I was like, whoa, Sanji's nah. kind of going in, dude. Like, nah, all nah, right. Nah, nah. I'm, I'm a big Sanji fan. He's my number one. You know, Sanji is why I started smoking cigarettes as a kid. Oh, yeah, no, my God, Sanji's a role model. Like I, le I learned how to cook because I wanted to be like him. I took, a, I took like karate classes, so I learned how to kick. I was like, yo, Sanji's a, he's a role model, man. The role the model. thing, the thing with uh, Sanji, with with the the lines, the. It's interesting that you said it was a personality change. I like that more, right? Because then it's like he's more like his brothers in a way, which yeah. is interesting because that's what he was running from. But he, it's less so, it, it feels more so like his brothers don't control their emotions when they're in that state, which is why they're like relentless, right? Sanji is fueled turning, by the emotion. He's he, he's turning it into this, but it's not like he's not going to protect people, right? He's still yeah. working towards something. He might be aggressive, but he's channeling it towards something. But what's interesting is the dialogue when in in the TCB translation it said like, uh, "You won't get another warning." That hit me. I went immediately without even checking. Chapter six twenty, and it was literally like the Sanji when Sanji's talking to Jimbei and he's just like be careful what you have to say Mr. Fish <laughs> you only have one warning I here. won't forgive you yeah and I'm like yo is this you make our navigator this, cry I'll never forgive you ever is again is this Sanji pulling out this like bringing back the unfulfilled like rage that he had and one one extra note I like about the Sanji dialogue is that he's like, hey, going by the article or going by the decree of Sanji Land's constitution, you know, like he's really encapsulated the the prince persona from his family too. It's so nice to see this. This is this is Sanji development. But speak yeah, before just... Sanji though, before he shows up, we see that Brook yeah. is about to save Nami from the gym base seraphim. But but we don't get that because Sanji shows up, right? He, he kind of steals yeah. the spotlight. Do you think? Brook would have been able to stop S Shark. I don't know if stop, but like stall, yes. I feel like if Nami was able to with Zeus, I think Brook's freeze powers are underestimated. But it's interesting because we don't like Onigashima didn't tell us that. Yeah. Like, the only thing is like Big Mom, but like he didn't scratch Big Mom, and he yeah, scratched he like did... the soul. He so he had like a a tribute bonus right there too. Him. Oda including Brook in this light when Sanji's like overtaking the dialogue, interrupting Brook. He could have just had that. But what I want to point out to the viewers, and, and like I'm gonna expand on this in a future video, but the reason why this is so crazy is why include Brook just to have literally one word? 
Oda decide to name a new move, which we also know, by the way, that Oda uses the wiki to remember his move sets in, in when he writes scenes. So yeah, he that's goes really to, funny, actually. I yeah. Saw that. So so like for him to make a new move in this panel that's so random is is interesting. I wouldn't sleep on that. Yeah, point. don't and, don't sleep on that word. I mean, yeah. I, I think there's going to be some good meaning there. Like you said, yeah. Oda decided to get dedicate that small panel for that one word. In the midst of all of this, right? It's kind of crazy. Dude, you know what? You know what's funny? Just just going back to that Oda comment and how he looks at the wiki to remember like moves and stuff. Yeah. I like to imagine he also control F and searches for titles and stuff too. Oh, 1000%. Because, like, like, so a lot of people have been talking about the title of this chapter, which says you should have realized that sooner. And they're like, oh, that's Zoro's joke, but that could also be referring to the traitor and, and breaking the fourth wall a little bit. But also, I think there's a, a fourth option, too, where it's just that Oda's kind of running out of titles. Like, after 1,077 chapters, eventually Oda's going to be like, man, like, I wanted to title it this, but I already titled this other chapter this. Like, I can tell he's, like, control F and, like, he's searching it up. Like, okay, this one fits, this one fits, thank God. So you're saying the fourth meeting, right, right? It's because yeah. th the breaking the fourth wall was a dig at, like, the theory community and the community at large for not figuring out the traitor, right? That's our... Yeah. You should have known sooner. There. The fourth meaning that you're implying, are you also implying that Oda's just like, how have you not figured out the One Piece? You guys should have figured it, put it together sooner. Yeah. Right? Like you ran out of titles and he's just like, God damn it, guys. How, how am I still writing this goddamn <laughs> Imagine, story? Imagine the next chapter. It's just what Oda had for lunch, like bento box with salmon. <laughs> I, I'd love that. I'd love that. I think that would be cool. my, my like fourth or fifth or sixth, whatever meaning was it's not even like necessarily breaking the fourth wall. It was memeing on his editors. And like we were talking about how in the way Egghead was, it'd be really cool. And we know that this there's some structure and validity here. The editors don't know everything about the story. So Egghead would be a cool way to test out his murder mystery by making it so the editors don't know who the, the murderer is or the traitor or whoever it is and have them guess too. And so this title could just be like, haha, you guys should have put it together sooner like digging at the editors and it, editors digs, like, it just oh. digs at everybody yeah yeah i could see oda doing that quintuple dig yeah quintuple so going on with the chapter though after we see the sanji little fight here we cut over to lilith who's using the bubble gun against s snake uh, s snake goes down we learn that they are affected by energy made from the sea uh, and, you know, Frank is going in, he's holding down the bubble on her, and it's working! It's actually working. She can't do anything. I think they would've had it right here, just put her in the bubble and be over with it. But, Frankie falls for S. Snake's charm, and then half of him gets turned into stone. We hate to see it, very unfortunate, but at least he still has half a body. Unlike Usopp and Lilith, who are also turned fully into stone, just like York. So how do you how do you feel about all these events here? Uh it was interesting because Frankie demonstrated a first. We've yet to see anybody half petrified. And you kinda kinda wonder because Frankie is a character taken away by his emotions we get this is like quadruple downing that boa's fruit is not lust based it's emotional drunkness which is what the fruit actually refers to being drunk off of emotions and uh, what that basically means is like you get carried away by your emotions like like the fact that you know frankie pulls out a giant robot and chopper usap luffy get star eyes well they would get stoned in that situation because they get they let their excitement get the best of them right you have to be stoic and the irony of being stoic is that you you're like a stone in that regard and so it's interesting here because frankie's not that character so it makes you wonder how he was able to demonstrate this first. Is it because he's half cyborg that he's not uh, able we've to We've actually, turned? correct me if I'm wrong, I think we've actually seen half stone people before. Have we? I think the only iteration of that was pacifistas when Boa hit them with a thing. And it wasn't lust based. It's her hitting them and then parts of the pacifistas turned to stone. I don't perfectly recall anybody think, being half stone i think there was uh, an instance in marine Four where she went around just kicking people and turning part of their body into stone turning their part of their okay so but that's still different right because that's boa touching somebody for a... that's not like that's not emotion based you know what i mean yeah. whereas like frankie's if it if if what you're saying was emotion based 
that's that would that would be a one to one example to me because we saw we saw the touch example and that did uh, partially petrify pacifistas and you might be right that would partially petrified some people but if it was lust based and you were able to get half then I would look at those two characters and try and figure out why because Frankie to me was able to overcome emotion somehow right that's yeah. something not something york was able to do that's not something that like what uh maynard the vice admiral um his entire crew they couldn't uh do that right like there's been so many examples of people being completely petrified and none of those people again from memory based off emotion being able to half it and i wonder if that says something so about frankie i have I've, i so i have a picture pulled up i can't send it because we're in a discord call but mm. i have a picture of boa kicking somebody in a similar way as frankie and that person only turning partially into stone. Oh, you're right. Yeah, like I, you're Bo, right. Boa, it's a like kick. if Boa, if Boa were to use like the Meadow Meadow, like the whole beam on Frankie, he'd be all stone. You're right. You're it's right. it's I simply completely... because she went in for a kick. That's that's kind of that, where right. I'm at. You're right. No, no, no. I completely. I thought so. I was looking at the panel when she was down, and then the half thing. I completely forgot she used the uh, femur, whatever the kick move. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's my fault. Yeah, that's true. That's also interesting, though, that it would affect them that much when you think about it. Because in the, I'm not sure what the partial picture you see, but like, is it like that fast acting? I remember. Oh Lynx. yeah. I mean, was, the, the other like per, the other people did not have the they did not have the same fortune that Frankie does because the other <laughs> people who got hit not only turned half into stone, uh -huh. but they also cracked. That's rough. So, I also yeah, like how rip. you come communicate that as you lifted your cat over yeah, it's it's natural my, my cats love to be on the desk but i just kind of yeah. put them onto the side <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah i Frankie mean other rip. than that the at Frankie least he's one, there it's interesting because he's still mobile i wonder for what purpose but um maybe like, just to communicate that his entire squad fell minus him and pythagoras yeah is is his antenna side fine oh his antenna's on the top so i don't know how that necessarily works the usap and lilith one lilith is goofy right she should know she saw York being affected by this, and she can't like maintain a persona, and and she was affected. It's like a knock on Vegapunk, but like whatever, it's yeah. fine. Um, Usopp, <sighs> rest in peace, Usopp, bro. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's weird because when they turn to stone, it's like this isn't something we can just cure next chapter, unless we just get the Seraphim under control. So I think, I, I think that's worst... really interesting because it almost like writes him off in a way which makes sense right like oda loves to separate the straw hats he loves to split up the story so whenever characters are incapacitated like this i bet oda's so happy he's like yo like one more one more group i Less... don't have to draw for a minute right yeah I, I i think what's also interesting here is like we're i think there's a lot of people who like usap and there's a lot of people who delusionally like usap and I think that's fine too because when people put you in extreme situations, you fall to that extreme. And Usopp is an extreme situation where he's like this normal dude who, who gets all this hate <laughs> and and a lot of stuff, right? And he comes into the new world saying he's gonna be the strong dude, and he was, and he is. He, he was but, for a minute, for a minute, and then Onigashi comes around, and he's like not that big of a deal and i'm watching the anime there's been no notable parts even when Izo scene comes in what what's gonna happen he's gonna be losing to beast pirates and be saved by a white beard pirate like all right cool that's not great for him page one i on dude i was so delusional when we were at wano i was like yo this is it usopp's gonna beat page one and it's gonna be amazing and then the opposite happened the, the exact opposite happened twice he lost to page one twice and it's like that yeah, that it is pain rough. that is so pain it was definitely and and then here we are in this situation right where usopp this seemed like an arc for usopp yeah i, I thought usopp was gonna get an upgrade i was like yo like this is it like vegapunk's here maybe he can get some crazy technology every island that has some advancements usopp takes it his his bug island skypea like every chance usopp can evolve with just basic equipment he does and i was like oh and this, is still, it. this is it he's he still can but like he still can it's not the, it's not over but he's just he's gonna be missing same. for a minute yeah if if he is missing then it's it's important to recognize that like in skype he got to experience the dials see how they're used and then he incorporated them the bug island he was there for two years right this this would change that pattern right and that's where i come to a very interesting stand 
point of view where deep down and this is yeah. why i shout out the delusional ones right because because i my most popular video on my channel is an usap video and you know what it's funny that oda did this to usap because i just basically announced that i'm gonna have two very major usap videos because i think they're important to the last saga and the main thing about it is we just came off of think about perona think about perona what Everybody else is affected by emotions, and Usopp pulled through. He beat the allegations, and he was, was able negative. to work through that, right? Yeah. The, we, we saw that again with Sugar. And you know the why I'm bringing up the, the girl? We Everybody already thought that Usopp would face as Snake because he has the beating on little girl uh, pattern that, that he has with Perona, whether it's Sugar, whether it's... Uh, uh, as snake here it, it makes sense that usopp is the one to do it right you can debate that in the comments all you want now the thing is usopp has also been shown to have yes not conquerors but a strong willpower to a certain extent yes he has the i don't want to go to this island disease whatever so you think but he's when, gonna break out of the stone with his willpower because we just saw law do it and law doesn't have conquerors and it he could doesn't know it's, it's just hockey Okay, Usopp, so I, I've seen people. I've seen a lot of people say that Usopp will break out of this with hockey, and is, maybe it's just his nose. Like, maybe while, while no, I agree, kidding. you could probably break out of this if you had immense hockey. It's just that Usopp doesn't. He hasn't trained his hockey to our knowledge, right? Like Law, at least we could look at Law and be like, oh, Law, yeah, he's used hockey, not not since day one, but ever since post time skip. Like Law is that guy, but for Usopp though, it's like Usopp used observation once. And in dress rosa, and that was kind of it. And he's a sniper, so ob giving him observation hockey was like acceptable. But then, like to give him a same similar feat as Law, yeah, that's where yeah, the delusion it's, it's, comes. It's in, hard. For sure. it, I mean, I, I could see that argument, but I'm like, yo, I, I think Usopp's just stoned for a minute, man. Like, I, I can't imagine him breaking out of this. But, but here's the thing: he I think I think that logic is attractive because. Even if you don't really like Usopp, I think a lot of people want Usopp to be meaningful. It's just that yeah, he has I, I want I want Usopp to be strong. Like, he, it's kind of a meme at this point, but everybody's like, oh, we, we gotta wait for Elbaf, right? We gotta wait for Elbaf until Usopp gets something. But here's the thing, a lot of characters get small Ws and arcs. Usopp just really hasn't. People yeah. go back to Onigashima and they're like, oh, he, you know, he shot... Uh, what is it? Kibi Dongo into the smile user's mouth. And it's like, that's cool. But like Tama had an army of like 500 of them just going around doing that too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I Usopp mean, could speed, only stay in one hallway. I'm pretty sure her own, like horse, horse, Alina and, yeah, and horse, the Alina, other dude, all of them, like they, they yeah, went crazy. Yeah. They were more helpful in that regard. And, and you know, uh, this is actually a point that I'm going to bring up in regards to Zoro, but um, it's almost in the arc that you least expect it where straw hat or, a prominent straw hat gets a buff. So why would anyone ever think that Usopp, of all people in Dressrosa, would ever have a W at the magnitude that it was, becoming God Usopp? That was never a setup thing. Usopp and Doflamingo and Sugar, that was not like a thing that was ever pre-set pre, pre uh, set up. The Nolan thing was introduced there. And then even then it's like, oh, he's not going to do anything that crazy, right? Sanji's another example. I don't think anybody prior to us like we knew we were going to confront big mom we knew whole cake island was somewhere down the line but i don't think anybody really expected sanji for that to be sanji's huge arc but then look what happened oda twisted away for it to make sense in the same regard a lot of people expected zoro to to have his w in wano but then what did we get we didn't get that and it might be that there's a a uh, a way, especially with this SBS, that it comes up later in a place you didn't expect it. And Usopp, I feel like, like you're saying, Elbaf, like, it, that is like, how many more islands do we have? But it's not even that. It's like, we are on Egghead, bro. Like, we are on a place where everybody can get buffed. Everybody besides Luffy, essentially. Think about it. This is Egghead Island. Usopp's nose is shaped like a sausage. Eggs and sausage go together. You know there could be a chance that Usopp still shows out. And I, I believe it, you know, I, I'm good either way, but this this is this is a little bit of an L for Usopp. Uh, it's, it's just unfortunate for Usopp fans who thought this was going to be crazy. So now that they are stoned, though, do you think Boa Hancock could make an appearance? Because I've seen a couple people tout that idea that the real Boa could come over and maybe 
she's able to undo the petrification. But why would she come? Yeah, that's the hard part. But last we saw her, she did want to go find Luffy. Whether or not that's just her memeing around or not, right? Does Rayleigh have... Lu Rayleigh has Luffy's Viva card? I think so, right? I don't know. Lu I know Luffy so has Luffy has Rayleigh. Rayleigh's Vivri card. I don't know if Rayleigh has Luffy's. But yeah, either way... I don't know if Luffy still has Rayleigh's yeah. Vivri card. If, if Boa Hancock does come here, do you think she could undo it? It would be great. I think it'd be great because actually... A theory I never made a video about, but it, it's on the stream when um, that Blackbeard chapter, I don't remember what number it was. But uh, I was thinking that when Boa says like that, that the petrific, she can't undo the petrification, right, um, of previous user. That's so interesting because then how did she know that, right? That's yeah. what I was saying that like that would mean that she was put in a situation where she tried. She was put into an environment where she tried, and that relates back to her days in, as a celestial dragon slave, probably. And so, um, the thing about that is, like, I think that she can. I think that she probably can, me, whether it's an awakening or not. I think that she can. She just hasn't had the correct motivations for it, right? If there is somebody who, or if Luffy asks her to unpetrify, right, somebody, like, she, Luffy already asked her to unpetrify the people on Amazon Lily and she she obliged right but if she, it's a situation where someone else is petrified by a different power maybe she'll will it hard enough if Luffy asks I could see that again I think the hard part is w how and why is Boa coming here yeah I think if someone were to answer that to me in the in the comment section or in the discord hey I'm on board I think Boa's a very interesting person to bring to Egghead because I don't know where that would go from so there. So the interesting thing with Boa coming here, if Boa does show up here because she's looking for Luffy, I would assume that Cross Guild would be with her too. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 What's up? All right, King, get to the last panels. I want to get the last panels, then I'll say what I was going to say. All right. I looked something up while we were on this call, and it's crazy. So, on to the last part, though. We got Shaka showing up at the former Delafruit Laboratory. And we see that he finds the Celebody, but before he can do anything, the guy gets blasted from behind. Regular-looking gun, no silhouette, katak katak, clink clink, whatever you sound effect you want to use. We got somebody in the background, and that that's all she wrote. Will Shaka survive this? Probably, because it's One Piece, you know? I, I feel like Shaka... We don't, we don't know what's underneath the helmet, so I, I feel like Oda might still give us that much. Uh, whether or not he combines his body with Pythagoras' head and becomes an all-new being altogether, also a possibility. But there we have it. The intruder is now finally entering the scene. And there are a couple of characters that are missing, of course, that we didn't see in this chapter, like Robin, Chopper, Atlas, Stella, or Jimbei. So for all we know, the traitor could actually be confirmed to have been Chopper this entire time. <laughs> I, I've seen I love that theory like evil chopper he's been waiting for this day forever yo honestly best thing that ever happened to chopper leave yeah. leave Oda is not treating you well become the villain of this yeah, story yeah chopper is no longer the mascot he is the villain that'd be yeah, kind of cool he breaks the fourth wall that'd be and funny the human human fruit awakened him to the reality that he's just a plush the toy. human human fruit made it to where he hates all robots and technology yo he's like we gotta crazy. go back to the caveman days yeah, I mean, we talked at length about, like, the various uh, options for who this person could be. And we went yeah. through, like, every single one. The old ones that we talked about, new ones that people want to bring up, Judge and Caesar. There's not a good answer in any of the regards if it's if it's a new character or it's a third party like blackbeard there would be new information that probably either was incredibly well hid or uh new information that we weren't privy to that makes it all make sense and i guess the two questions that pe most people should be asking themselves and i'm going to be asking myself this on sunday on a stream we're going to try to figure out the timeline the timeline of those two months what were what was concurrently happening in the world two months i know a lot of people are doing it um i just want to sit down with the stream and, and sat, sit down with it but the and, and like there, there's so many different things about that right like like motive right like motive is dubious how why you know <laughs> timeline is such a hard 
question to answer here. It's interesting um, too, because imagine this, whoever's capturing all the Cyberpol agents and Stella, they're like, hey, we got to keep these guys alive. We got we to gotta preserve them in this jail cell. But Shaka, no, let's just off them. Yeah, and then and then let's that lends itself Shaka. to the next thing where besides the timeline, the other place you can look are gaps. Gaps in the timeline or gaps in information told to us because in those gaps could be where the new information fits. And so from those gaps, you can extrapolate possible scenarios that would make this make sense. Um, the boa coming here now, this is actually where I wanted to connect it because it wasn't Bo. I wasn't thinking about boa cross guild and boa is interesting because boa and cross guild combining, you know, that that's the logic of, you know, the warlords are like, why not? Let's gather up the warlords. Yeah. Since we're all, we it's, have a similar, and especially because the last panel we see a bow, we see sand in the background too. So a lot of people are saying that crocodile is making an appearance and maybe extending an invite. Cause she said she didn't know where to go minus finding Luffy. So Crocodile popping up right there and saying, hey, you want to join us? And then you can, right. you know, go off and do your own thing. It's pretty, I'm gonna hit you. I like I'm going to hit you with it. I made a theory, okay? I made a short theory that Crocodile was a clone of Dufeld. They I saw looked that. similar, but m the main thing, right? And they could be father-son too, but I like the clone one because Dufeld funded Mads for what reason? Why did a why you you don't ever get think in our real world guys you don't ever get a rich person that pays money for nothing for the for the Pete laboratory of peace hell no you know, like he has to get something out of it and if their ultimate magna uh the, the I was gonna say Magnum uh, Magnus Opus was Stussy a clone and cloning was their main operation then that would imply that Dufeld wanted a clone and it would make sense if he had a clone of himself being Crocodile the other tie is that the only other character in the series that has been shown to be a loan shark which is Dufeld's epithet is crocodile he is buggy's loan shark they have more ways than one that they're connected and explain why uh crocodile was like so comfortable in the new world and, and like he was in like dripped out places and castles and like reading newspapers and in in, in, in in like mtv crib places right and so the thing about crocodile that that i was thinking about was like well if he was connected here that would make him come to the ark and while we were reading it while we were reading this i recognized on luffy's back and i don't know how this connects but on luffy's back when he's fighting uh as kuma uh or as bear he has the numbers 163 and 163 is arabasta yuba the town of rebels and the opening panel is sandstorm you was being hit by a sandstorm oh. and i'm like and so while like you you guys might see it you guys can go back in the vod when we we're on that panel i i stopped to google something and this was it i was like wait is crocodile coming is that from then on i was like is is, is this person who shot him crocodile because if crocodile was a clone then as absurd as that is, that would give him the same familiarity as uh, Stussy. And the re other reason why people like the, the 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 clone idea, some people, a lot of people don't like clone theories, is because the stitches, the same, it would be a similar S thing as that Weevil would have. And a lot of people already assume that Weevil's a failed clone. How many failed clones do you think existed, right? Stussy can't be the first clone. There have to be failed clones. And he can't tell me you went from Weevil to Stussy. Because if you went from Weevil to Stussy, then take my wallet, bro. Take my wallet. You were the greatest person. How do you go from Weevil to Stussy? You can't. There's what probably if, more than Weevil. What if, uh, what if a failed part of Crocodile was that he was born a girl? Or like they, they made a girl instead of a boy, so that's why he wanted to switch genders with Yvonne Kong. Oh yeah, that's exact. That's some people responded like, "Yo, that's the failure," and then that's how he connects the Yvonne Kong. But the thing, the thing, the thing with this, I guess the one thing that uh -huh. negs it is just Crocodile having a kid drawn in an SBS, like his kid form. I guess we don't know if clones are like made to be adults or not, but no, clones age. All the clones age. Yeah. So you think the person who shot him could be Crocodile? I'm open to it now. All things considered like everyone if we're considering people think caribou bro like come on if, hey, if you want to tie in the crocodile vegapunk thing i mean crocodile had lasso in the crew right at some point yeah and lasso oh! lasso was the first mention we had of vegapunk 
la no, technically no, but yes. In the sense of Lasso was a gun that ate a dog devil fruit, but in that arc we never got that explained. We got I think I think what they said it. is that the like the gover like the government found out a way on how to do it. Yeah, that was in any that was post Annie's lobby. Mm. So then it was in regard of Funk Freed, but then as a reader we know that that probably meant less too, but that's always been confusing. Yo, this might be a full video now. Oh god, this is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, the I got Crocodile Vegapunk connections building up. I'm down for it. Like I said, Bowie Hancock showing up, Crocodile Cross Guild showing up, Caesar Judge, bring everybody here, man. Bring everybody to Egghead Island. I'm down for it. As far as the shooter goes, I I really like the idea. Obviously, there's no, like, concrete evidence. I do like the idea that people are throwing out there that this could be, like, S. Flamingo. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's pretty I, solid. I memed on the idea in the live reaction, but I came around to it because it, there's more ways than one to make it make sense. It It's cool. I like it. The iconic I pistol. Think, I think second to that or even above that is Blackbeard Pirates, but the Blackbeard Pirates is still lack of... Like, there's a lot of explaining to do in the context of everything that we know that this trader has done for this to make sense. And you can explain them through all the Blackberry Pirates, sure. But the amount of explanation is so lengthy that, yeah. like, I, I don't know how... Like, yes, it's plausible, right? Um, but S. Flamingo is honestly easier. It's so much easier to explain S. Flamingo. The only hard part of S. Flamingo is does it exist? If it exists... Sure. My question was, why hasn't S. Flamingo ever... We dispatched... Shaka dispatched everyone. Why not S. Flamingo? If S. Flamingo is a, fo a failed Seraphim, sure, cool. That's a small explanation. Much smaller than the Blackbeard Pirates at the moment, right? Because then you wouldn't need to explain away the two months and the, the subterfuge and, and all the things that went underneath uh, Vegapunk's uh, eyes. And then on top of that, why would Blackbeard tell the world government at this stage about Vegapunk if that was the case, right? That's even a weird one. Why yeah. would Blackbeard Pirates tell them about the Poneglyphs instead of just taking the, the research or letting them research and then taking the, the spoils of their research, right? Like, and so uh, in that regard, it almost makes more sense that S. Flamingo makes sense because as a Celestial Dragon lineage, we know that that trend transfers to a certain extent we don't know if the celestial dragon lineage makes you a bigot as as you're born but like hey <laughs> like if if jimbe can come out with fishman karate i wouldn't put it past you know a conqueror's hockey user that's a celestial dragon that was noted that to be a monster from birth from multiple people to end up being this, this monster as a seraphim so i like that idea i mean another idea? another solid idea that has a lot of plausibility is mary uh, from Usopp's syrup village <laughs> he has the same i mean the, the pistol looks the same we haven't seen mary in a little bit he could be upset that they burned the going mary <laughs> and he could be upset that they defeated kaido king of beasts since we do know that mary has those sheep horns maybe he was one of the first smile devil fruit users in the world you know and he's like fact, he's coming he's coming back for revenge you know fun fact uh mary knows new comma tempo oh look at that yeah no Mar mary is gonna be a menace when yeah. Mary, the butler from, from Syrup Village, comes over and attacks the Straw Hats, it's going to be a threat worse than Kaido and Big Bomb combined. If you guys want to know, Sai so dropped some extra bars on this, but <laughs> hey, he had he had my chat going on you this know, one. You know the person that Shanks talked to the Godese about? It was just Mary. Oh, shut up, 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 shut up. He's like, hey, uh, Saint Saturn, you know the reason why I was in the East Blue for so long? It's because I had to try to keep his powers in check. I had, to, I had to make sure that he didn't make his move yet. Referring to Mary. I have to tell That's you That's why Yasop left Syrup Village. Because he, he, he felt a great threat. He, he had an ally with the Yonko to take down Mary. He's like, I Shanks, have I have to join your crew. Shipwright in all of history. Mary. <laughs> Mary. And then underneath it says... Captain one Kuro of, wasn't there for <laughs> Kaya. He was there for Mary. He was there for Mary because he's an ancient weapon. <laughs> oh, no. When we when we see Mary, it's gonna be the god of the god of all beasts, like Kaido's com Kaido's uh, supreme commander. It's funny because I actually think Mary's gonna not important, but narratively there might be a, an importance there because there's a like Mary could be like a mink human hybrid, knows new comma tempo, 
and then on top of that, my my latest video talks about why the Mary thing is, is such an interesting concept. But the fact that he was able to build the going Mary is just kind of wild, all things considered. Like the Mary is this random ass ship, right? That fell from a sky island. That's ten thousand kilometers. Sure, an octopus, you know, brought it down most of the way, but then I think Luffy popped it, right? Whoa. And then it fell. Wait, wait, wait. So do you know how we made the ship, right? Shut sh stop. No, 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 no. So, I so you see know your face. I see, he he, he has the god of creation fruit, like how Luffy's the sun god. Mary is the god of creation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He has he has that fruit. It's a, it's a mythical Zoan devil fruit, just like Luffy's. So I, I think he would be a crazy character to have in. He he was actually creating all the technology on Egghead Island. Oh yeah, one thousand percent. He's actually the inspiration. If you go act, this is real. If you go back to Elbath, um, Big Mom's flashback, you'll see that the Elbath warriors uh cherished and loved mary that's actually where he learned his, his his craftsmanship because you'll see on the houses you'll see the head of mary on some of the houses this is yeah true. no Go no that check. is okay uh memes aside that is actually true so maybe maybe there is something here maybe, maybe mary is the final event what if what if when we get to the to the rever or not reverie when we get to marie joie we get to pangea castle and it's actually just mary as im Yo, no, 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 listen, listen, you know, do you know Dak Sake's theory that uh, the One Piece is an afro? Uh, no. Like, you, you've you heard of it. But I, I've heard watched. of it, but I haven't watched it. So, he has a part two. That's how deep this theory is. Joy Boy Theories just sh shouted it out recently to, to Roger's base in Tekken. And it's a really crazy theory because you don't think that it makes sense, but he, he, got a, he convinced a lot, a lot of people. And my thing is... There's way too many Afro references. And the thing about it, I just... Mary has uh, an Afro. Know. Yeah, there Mary. we go. I, I, I think I think Mary's going to make a comeback. Whether it's Egghead Island or Laugh Tale. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's going to be a menace. You guys better watch out. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for Mary's comeback. Keep your eyes peeled. What do you think we're going to see? 1070... What are we, 1078? Yeah, what are we going to see? So, jokes aside with Mary, I think we will see the real traitor. Oh, okay. I, I think I think we're actually going to see who it is. Not Damn. like I think that the mystery should just be shattered like that, but I, I feel like it's a good time to reveal it. I mean, given the chapter title. Yeah, we can't really tell where the person is walking at the end of the chapter, whether they're going up the stairs or down the stairs. It <laughs> looks like they're going down the stairs. So maybe if Stella just looks forward and we don't, we, we get his point of view, we'll see who it is. Uh, that is what I'm hoping for. I do like the idea also that Shaka's not dead. People are saying that that was oil, not blood. Yeah. And then you said that like, it, there's a meme that Shaka is like a headless person or robot. Or like a Tontata. So, like imagine, imagine yeah. Shaka like pops out his chest true, and it's like a Tontata be... just no, inside no, no, no. of him. If, if that's like a mini true, robot. my Vegapunk theory would be correct. Cause then a Vegapunk would be, I um, so to clue people in, in my original Vegapunk theory, I was saying that Vegapunk, uh, the silhouette in the picture that we got is misleading and it, it very Oda like to make it that oh, he would put like a, a chopper size or a tentata size person in a giant mecha or a giant robot and that would be crazy if Shaka was piloted by a tentata that would be so cool the legendary tentata oh it's, my or god it's, or it could be like attack on Titan. he's actually in his neck he was just controlling everything like that That'd be sick. Be Honestly, cool. I think Shaka's gonna live now that you said that, especially, and I love the idea that Pythagoras and Shaka do like a fusion. Yeah, somebody <laughs> commented that on my, my previous video, and I was like, yeah, that's such a good idea. Pythagoras and Shaka just fusing together a head without a body and a body without a head. Shakagoras or Pythaka. Well, do you think or that would actually make another name if we combine those two? Like another philosopher or another moon name. crater or whatever it is? I don't know if it's supposed to equal another name, but maybe Oda has someone in mind, right? Someone who connects on, the, well, Pythagoras well, and Shaka, Shaka Paka, Pakaman. <laughs> there we go. Like that. Yeah. 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 We, we got I mean, the trade reveal. Wasn't guys. necessarily like a philosopher from what I remember. He was like a he was a vet, a, a, an extremely talented, a str str uh, tactician, strategist in. Oh, war. Shaka! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. Uh, you know, the moon crater thing, the moon association, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, I, I definitely do like that idea that Shaka, and, and that would explain, you know, but it's weird because, um, 
Because then Luffy would have to find another nickname because he calls him Helmet. So if it's not an actual helmet and it's just like a, a head, I wonder what Luffy will call him after that. I would like to imagine they put on another helmet just to appease Luffy. Yeah, something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we get the person, I could easily see Oda putting a break in, though. Like, we go back to Shanks and a kid. What I think, okay, this is how I think next chapter is going to be structured. We're going to start uh -huh. next chapter from the perpetrator's point of view. Oh! And we'll actually see how they pulled a lot of this off. And it's going to be oh! a silhouette for a majority of the chapter. We'll see, like, their back all shattered up. And then at the very end of the chapter, when they reveal the traitor, we'll finally see them in full view. I think that's how the chapter is going to go down. That's some. That feels like Detective Conan a little bit. I love that. I, I am a fan. I want that. I need that. If it's not next chapter, the chapter afterwards. Because the thing is, like, I, you know, in terms of breaking the mystery, right? Like, Egghead, like, being shorter or longer, it's so confusing because if you take out the mystery of who this person is, then that would basically mean that the next issue comes up. And that is the 100 ships in the Gorosei, right? Yeah. Or the St. Saturn. So is that, I think where I'm at is, like, is that coming that soon? Or are we playing around with this until the next break week, right? Hey, and then, it depends. So because remember, Oda wants to ideally end One Piece in three years. There's only about two years-ish left for that. So less than 100 chapters. Bro is a liar. And, Stop it. You know no, he's no, lying. According to Oda, in less than 100 chapters, we're going to find the One Piece, beat the Godosei, beat him, get out of Egghead Island, go to Elbath, beat Blackbeard. Less than 100 chapters. I... I I'm not saying that. Oh, it's Oda's words. He, he wants to end One Piece in three it. years. Afterwards, he said like more realistically five years. That's what yeah, he said. Yeah, I, I think I think Oda said. I don't think he said realistically five years. I think he said his timing is really bad. So don't take his word for it. Yeah. But I ideally, one... Oda wants to end this in a hundred chapters, which I unfathomable. Yeah, impossible. It would be no it would be so rushed. Imagine we end Egghead Island next arc or next chapter. I mean, what makes the most sense That'd to be me funny. is what Rogers Base, I think, said was that from a business standpoint, they're just going to do the 30 year anniversary. And so that's 2027, I believe. Yeah, 2027. I could see That'd that. Be the 30 year anniversary. And then they would just have uh, the same thing. We had a 25th year. We had Film Red. This is going to be like a huge, like, you know, Manhattan was Times Square. Not Manhattan. Times Square was taken over. There's going to be a version of that in at the 30th anniversary, right? <laughs> Oda and... takes over China. <laughs> <laughs> Invades them with the power of Egghead. Yeah. And then it's going to oh. be called One Piece Film Laugh. <laughs> oh, God. And the thing is, it's like the... Uh, no, I forgot what I was going to say, um, but yeah, I mean, hey, I, I think that's, oh, I remember now, because uh, Detective Conan writer, Aoyama, he has something similar, where it's like, he could end the series, like, tonight, today, tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure I read this, um, people can fact check it, but I'm pretty sure he has a deal where he has to keep going until he has 30 movies out, so they're paying him millions or whatever, So and he has a 30 movie deal, and this was, like, he announced this when he was, like, the 20th movie or something like that, and he's, like, at the 26th movie, so Detective Conan and One Piece would end around the same time, and there would be the 30th movie, 30 year kind of thing, because there's been a movie, I think, every single year of Detective Conan, Damn. but so One Piece could be in that same light, of like maybe Oda's behind the scene has like a contract, like he has to get to the thirty year mark. Something They're holding like him hostage. Yeah, yeah. But like Oda, hey, we know I you mean, want to go to your family, but you got you got to fulfill the contract, man. People are okay with him with me holding him hostage, so I wouldn't. I, and considering the story we're getting, I, I'm not. You know, most hostage situations, like we traded Griner for the Merchant of Death. That's not well, exactly like the most. It's one to one balanced. It's not. <laughs> If anything, we got it. We got a really good trade. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so I'm saying, right? Like in the Oda situation, he, I like to imagine Brittany is... Griner could destroy countries with with the drib with their dribbling skills. <laughs> and in this situation, Oda doesn't get to see his family, but we get to be part of his. Family, That's how Oda right? takes over China. He sends Brittany Griner there. He just dribbles <laughs> and just breaks all their ankles. <laughs> Brittany Griner is gonna just like look oh, into, like double cross. Bruise. 
<laughs> news about her. She's going to look at like all the YouTube videos that talk about her. She stumbles upon this video and is just like unironically gets into the One Piece community because of this. Brittany Griner is going for a like uh, going for a pass and the people are like prepping for it. And then she actually just throws the ball in their face and like, oh, street ball. <laughs> I I knew you were more dangerous than the Merchant of Death. She does an alley up to herself. Oh, Nick yo, Chops. what if what if as a W like her epithet as a player becomes the Merchant of Death? That'd be crazy. The bringer of death. Oh no, the traitor of death. Oh, imagine imagine the person that off Shaka was actually just Brittany Griner. <laughs> <laughs> we look closer, and it's not a bullet; it's a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to that point, right? I just want to bring that back real quick. It's like, funny. I see so many people, especially in the live reaction, trying to figure out what gun this is. I Dude, only it's see impo- the Oda made this gun as ambiguous as possible. Like, all One Piece, not all One Piece guns, but they have an, like a musket esque looking thing for most of them. The revs, the one. The only Vega person this holding. eliminates is Van Auger. Because he has a sniper. Yeah. Yeah, so that wouldn't be the barrel. I gotta look at it, but the thing is, it's like, it could be all the Blackbeard Pirates, because they use pistols. It could be literally, like, maybe, like, we talked about it, maybe they confiscated a gun from the CP agents, right? Like, there's so many, this could be, like, people wanted it to be, it could be a recreation of Doflamingo's childhood gun, to make it S Flamingo holding the same gun, just like how Mihawk has Yoru, and then S Hawk has Yoru, and then this would be the same one. I like, sure, take it away. All I see is a tip. I, I, I'm known for making stretchy analyses. If, if that logic led you to a right answer, fine. I don't know. All I see is anybody a tip. can you be can't. right. The, honestly, figuring out who the traitor is on Egghead is like playing the lottery. Everybody has their little pool, but there's no pool that's like up there. Yeah, so there's I no mean, answer that's just like a hundred percent or ninety nine percent. Every answer is like very dodgy. You have to like always bend a little bit to fit it. Yeah, which like, I think I is like cool. Alice. Like, like there's no there's no real answer, and people are gonna be upset that we didn't bring up Caribou, but Caribou kidnapping CP agents for two months, like plus he was on Wano two months ago. Like this couldn't have been him. Maybe he has a part to play in it. But bro he, can't escape way, a barrel, and Frankie's the one guarding way, it. <laughs> Caribou isn't the main person. He could be working with the bad guy, but he's not the main guy. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the thing is, the main again, villain here. I will proclaim it here. I'm the caribou expert amongst the content creators. I don't know anybody who's analyzed the panels like I have. Go check out that video. And the, like the thing is, it's like this, this, uh, this situation, right? I don't From most of the content I go based creators, off gut feeling. Sure. No, no. You put out that cracked Mary theory on on my stream. <laughs> Yeah, the correct Mary theory, yeah, maybe. You came with the receipts, bro. Hey, what do you mean? I'm but a like, little in, bit of a scientist myself. With Egghead, I like I like that like it's it's defeated all the content creators that I've talked to. I like it. Everyone has res- has defaulted to like I see the options for a lot of people. Like I just talked to IMD King and he thought that there was like he wasn't exactly on board with accusing anybody and he didn't necessarily see anyone particularly as a suspect he was just kind of like waiting and seeing right and then i got on stream with him or call with him and then he's like everybody's suspect Uh, you can't everybody is suspicious as fuck i don't think it's just limited to content creators i mean everybody because like at the end of the day we just read the manga i I don't think we're anything that special like honestly there's 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 millions of people out there who read one piece on a daily basis that's fair but from the comments that i've seen the entire community is just thrown for a loop with this the comments that i've seen most people are confident on just it's it like to the point of like are you dumb it's atlas are you dumb it's shock like that is a majority of the comments and i, I know have, that's yeah. a majority there are people who are a little bit too sure about their answer i will admit yeah yeah that's what i'm getting at right because it's like i i have people i'm leaning towards but i'm also acknowledging that like yo this gun could be anyone <laughs> like yeah, this yeah. T- could talk I, could be anybody <laughs> like like i ha- i have my own stocks right like I- i'm like yo like i think this is s flamingo if i had to put money on it maybe i'd, I'd put on s flamingo but if it's somebody else it's like yeah that's cool you wait, know, wait, like, wait but would you put money on the crocodile one no Aww, i, I one. like crocodile being here but i don't think he's the one doing this though Aww. yeah sorry i <laughs> hate to say it I, I like buckets? all the ideas, but like I said, there, there's there's certain stocks I put my money in more so than others. What if there's a failed Stussy clone? Uh, <laughs> and her name is Busted. <laughs> Bussy. <laughs> oh, God, it's Bussy. Bussy. <laughs> Bussy's coming. <laughs> and she's just really ugly. 
<laughs> no, when you said bus, I said, oh my, it's that was bussy. rude. It's bussy. She's here. It ends up looking like current Bakken's It's busted. <laughs> it looks like Bakken's and Weevil combined together. No. They're getting revenge because they look so u ugly. No, but I was oh, thinking man. like we they were trying to test it out on Stussy. They got a successful one. So wouldn't that imply that they tried on Stussy? So like maybe there's a version of Stussy that's equally as competent just busted like you're saying and it's just a failed version that'll be um, that'll be hilarious oh god and then we need but, sanji to to kick them in the face to make them beautiful yeah one way i mean he has the plastic surgeon kick he's got it he's got ivankov's uh tricks up his sleeve yep that too, that too. With, with that being said thank you par for joining us again today do you want to shout yourself out in case people still don't know who you are yeah so uh if you guys don't know me, I, I, I'm a He's podcast. the guy from the 50-50 podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a podcast host from the 50-50. If you guys enjoy hearing Sai and I talk about it, you know, my co-host, or, or, you know, I, I think Sai is the host because it's way more fun when he <laughs> brings up the Mariana Trench, but whatever it is. Uh, we, we go on to my Vaz channel, join our discords. We share the links to the 50-50 podcast. I really... Though the you know one piece is great but those conversations are a lot of fun we end yeah up if you want to hear us theorize about the mariana's trench be sure to check us out there please yeah and the mantis shrimp and, and world and, and we hit we hit mantis shrimp ants uh the end of the world the line from the uae uh, watch out uh, our next Terraform our Mars. next topic for episode four of the podcast is going to be y2k and somehow, somehow, every episode we've mentioned three things without fail. Samoans. Which are. Par, Par has a grudge against Samoans. I don't know what it is. No, what do you mean a grudge? Like, I've been dude, talking about them in great context. Par talks about Samoans as if they're aliens. No! Right, every right. time Samoans are brought up, he's like, oh man. Like, like I, I bet there's a small part of Par who's like, man, the traitor is a Samoan. <laughs> no, that's actually you, funny because we did say that. We did say that in the thing. I, I, no, no, I think I, you said something about Lunarians being like S Samoans because Nikuma. they're so tanky. Kuma's special race because yeah. it wasn't like a clan or a race. It was like a clan or something. His it's just Samoan. Samoan. <laughs> Yo. Oh, my Samoans God. Samoans yeah. are dope. Yeah. Good I'm food. not. So so it's Elon Musk, Greta Thunberg, and Samoans. Those, Those are, are the three reoccurring fail. topics of the podcast. So if, 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 you're, if you're a big fan of Greta Thunberg, Please don't watch it. If you're <laughs> a fan of Samoans or Elon Musk, though, you you can watch it. Sure. So that's where you guys can find me primarily, you know, and I run a small channel called The Part Vision where we talk about One Piece sometimes, but mostly about Samoans, apparently. So <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to watch my YouTube channel, hit up uh, youtube.com slash at SYV. That's where I'm at. Or you could just look down below. We're also here, too. <laughs> You're like I forgot this is on my channel. <laughs> uh, you know what, dude? This third cup of coffee. We had a chapter that was pretty straightforward, so you, you know how it is. Yeah. Well, with that yep. being said, hey, thank you guys for watching again. Peace out, and we'll catch you guys next week.